Cafe Tavellini, once a successful Italian restaurant in Bridgeport, Connecticut, became a significant challenge for Gordon Ramsay in the fourth season of Kitchen Nightmares. The establishment was acquired by Lisa and Keith Restivo, who bought the place on a whim, despite their lack of prior experience in the restaurant industry. We didn't know the restaurant business. I'm a hairdresser by trade, and Keith owned liquor stores. We had no clue. Initially, things seemed promising as they benefited from the restaurant's established reputation. However, the lack of experience soon began to show, marking the beginning of a series of challenges. Gradually, Keith's enthusiasm for the day-to-day -day management of the restaurant faded. He began waking up late, often around 2 p.m., and chose to monitor the restaurant from home using surveillance cameras, rather than coming into the restaurant to work. This situation forced Lisa's children from a previous relationship, son Van and daughter Jolie, to take on the challenging task of running the restaurant without their mother and stepfather's consistent presence. Whenever the family did come together at the restaurant, the environment became tense, filled with constant arguments, particularly between Van and his stepfather, Keith. Honestly, you're never at your restaurant. Your son, not mine. Ignore them right now because you're embarrassing me. This constant conflict has turned it into a dysfunctional family-owned restaurant, lacking both leadership and customers. As such, the restaurant is grappling with a debt of $350,000. This financial burden, coupled with the ongoing disputes, is taking a toll on Lisa and Keith's marriage. This is what's going to have to happen. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Our marriage is at a brink because we fight constantly. Van starkly warns that failing to heed Gordon's advice could mean the downfall of not only the restaurant, but their marriage as well. Can Gordon help save not only the restaurant, but perhaps the family as well? Before Ramsey can even step foot inside the restaurant, he's approached by Van, who asks for a moment of Gordon's time for a quick chat. Opting for a bit of privacy, Van takes the front seat in Ramsey's car and shares that Keith is only at the restaurant that day because he knew Chef Ramsey was coming. Armed with that knowledge, Gordon finally arrives and meets Keith and Lisa. Hilariously, Keith informs him the restaurant is open seven days a week and he's there nearly every day. Lisa claims she's there every night. Van introduces himself to Gordon for the first time and we get to see the conflicting information about their schedules play out. After some awkward confusion, Gordon asks them to be upfront with him as he sits down ready to order. Talk about throwing me out of the bus. I mean, sat down and the starts. I told you. Gordon looks over their massive sized menu and then places an order with Van. Ricky, the waiter, introduces himself and reveals the main problem with the restaurant a lack of management. A reoccurring theme in this episode. Gordon requests a word with Keith, but it turns out that he's left the restaurant to pick up a liquor order. Gordon, meanwhile, receives his first order Grandma's Meatball Salad. He tries it and is grossed out by it, calling it an insult to all grandmothers. Hopefully, his next dish, the stuffed clams, are an improvement. In the kitchen, the chefs wonder if they should throw them in the oven or the microwave. Guess which one they choose. All right, put a microwave in. You'll take responsibility for that if he says it, all right? I don't want to learn about that. When the stuffed clams were served, Gordon remarked that they resembled dog doo-doo stuffed inside a shell. Not only that, Gordon doesn't find any clams in the stuffing and makes Van try it, who proceeds to take it back. Finally, Gordon receives a pan-roasted salmon, which looks decent enough. But when he bites into it, he finds it undercooked and the rice is mushy. He learns from Van that it was cooked the day prior, which essentially means someone would have paid $21 for poorly made Italian leftovers. Gordon has had enough and mockingly suggests ordering a sick bag next. Keith finally returns to learn that every single dish received bad reviews. With a blank expression, he brushes it off and focuses his attention on Van, who he plans to talk to later. Van doesn't see the need for a chat, but Keith isn't having any of it. They proceed to have a verbal sparring match. You have no clue what I do, okay. except when I get here. You're right, you're right. Who closed your restaurant every night? This eventually gets Gordon's attention as Lisa tries to intervene, only to get told to shut up by Keith in another room. A pin drop could be heard in the restaurant at that very moment. Gordon confronts them soon after, but the family starts arguing and Lisa erupts into tears. When Gordon informs Keith that the menu is terrible, before leaving to gather his thoughts. When Gordon eventually returns, he has a one-on-one -on -one with Lisa to learn about the finances. It's not good, with Lisa revealing they only had $40 in the till. Their house has been foreclosed on. Business is so bad that they can't even take a salary. Lisa even goes as far as saying she thinks about divorce and that it's all but guaranteed if the business fails. 
Next up, Gordon inspects the kitchen and finds that it's embarrassingly small. Not ideal when the menu has 70 or so different items. Meanwhile, customers arrive in droves thanks to news of Gordon's presence. It's time for Cafe Tavellini to be put to the test. To Gordon's surprise, the dishes are going out quick. A bit too quick. He soon finds out that most of the dishes are pre-cooked and coming from the fridge in an attempt to save space. Unsurprisingly, the food is dry, hard and not fresh at all. When Lisa is questioned as to why most of the food isn't made to order, she claims they simply didn't believe it to be a problem. Meanwhile, new problems are brewing. While the food was initially going out at a rapid pace, it's now slowed down dramatically due to the disorganized kitchen. Customers are waiting, there's garbage on the kitchen floor, Gordon is getting fed up and he can't find Keith or Lisa anymore. It turns out during the busy service, they decided to take a break to sit in their car and smoke. The kids, Jolie and Van, meanwhile need help. To their surprise, they learn Lisa placed an order from the restaurant herself, with Van delivering it to her car. What am I eating with my, my oh, fingers? Here, that's what, they, that's what I, you want. Work, work. Give, me Hello, give me the fork. While they eat their food in their car, the kitchen does their best to deal with the customers. As the service comes to an end, Gordon has a staff meeting where he calls out Keith and Lisa for abusing the restaurant while everyone else is frustrated. Keith's sorry response to that is that his passion is down. Jo Lee starts ripping into her parents for not showing any passion whatsoever and burning the restaurant into the ground. Gordon clearly has a lot of work and it seems drastic measures are called for. The next day, Keith and Lisa arrive to find their restaurant is closed and is out of business. That's all folks. Just kidding. However, Gordon does arrive and tells them they're closed for good. Lisa emotionally reads out a letter she wrote to Gordon stating that she and Keith let down everyone and were negligent. Even Keith is getting emotional. They both seem very genuine as they urge Gordon not to give up on them. That's exactly what Gordon wanted to hear as the closed signs were simply a wake-up call for them to get their act together. Keith and Lisa apologize to the rest of the staff soon after, and everyone is convinced they're sincere about changing for the better. That's not the only thing changing, though. Gordon is changing the menu to a more family-style one, including dishes like a Tuscan bean soup, porchetta with roasted vegetables, and olive oil cake. The goal is having more convenient dishes to ease the burden of the kitchen. Lisa is assigned to serve for the night, while Keith will have an active role promoting a cocktail. Keith is off to a good start with his pomegranate bellini, which has Gordon's seal of approval, as well as the customer's. Lisa is also not doing too bad and seems to be enjoying herself. The customers are thrilled with the new family style menu too. The problem is with the customers ordering from the regular menu with food coming at a snail's pace. The tickets are piling up and Gordon is starting to lose his cool. He reiterates to Lisa that a menu with 70 items just doesn't work in a kitchen that small. Meanwhile, Van notes how his parents are just walking around like headless chickens rather than checking on the customers who have had to wait for their food. Keith goes outside while Lisa feels embarrassed to go to tables and apologize to starving customers. While this is happening, Michael, the chef, is stepping up and pushing orders out. Eventually, all the orders are fulfilled and the customers go home with full bellies. Time for the review. Gordon notes that the family style menu was a hit. Jolie says that when shit hit the fan, her stepdad Keith disappeared. That cannot happen again. But Gordon was still pleased overall as he went ahead with his plans to give Cafe Tavellini a much needed makeover. The family and staff enter with blindfolds and are blown away by the new sleek and elegant dining rooms. There's a warm, champagne color in the interior now. There's textured walls and brand new plates and bowls with no chips in them. The kitchen has been decluttered and is more spacious as a result, much to the delight and relief of Michael. Outside, the restaurant has a new name in Tavellini, the tagline, Family Style Dining. While there is also a new menu, based on family style, a la carte dishes. Things in the new Tavellini era get off to a rocky start, with Keith forgetting what the dishes are while talking to customers. However, that aside, Michael is getting dishes out, the customers are happy an hour in, and Lisa is thrilled. But it's never going to be smooth sailing with this restaurant. Miscommunication with tickets leads to chaos in the kitchen, and dishes are now back to taking forever. Even Michael seems flustered. Gordon calls for Keith to step up in this time of turmoil, and it lights a fire underneath him. Lisa is also supporting the team and things gradually improve in the kitchen. Orders go out and the customers are happy once again. Overall, it was a successful night. Despite being close to disaster, the Tavellini team persevered and all received their congratulations from Gordon. 
The foundation has been set by Gordon, and now it's time for them to build upon it as he bids farewell. At least I can't do any more. I come back, and that front door is boarded up. I'm going to be so upset. It won't be. Not every episode has a happy ending, though. Despite showing positive signs towards the end, we later learn Keith and Lisa went right back to their old ways, continuing to argue with each other in the restaurant. Their marriage suffered as a result, and they eventually separated. But what happened to Tavolini? And what became of Keith, Lisa, Van, and everyone else since Kitchen Nightmares? Let's take a look. The original episode aired March 2011 as the ninth episode of the fourth season. However, Tavolini did not enjoy any boom in business or customers due to their appearance on Kitchen Nightmares. That's because the restaurant had already shut down in December 2010, just after Christmas, and months before the episode even aired. It turned out Keith and Lisa's marriage ended, and so did Tavolini soon after. Keith was hoping to reopen it the same month the episode aired, but this never came to be. Later that year in December, the now-defunct Facebook page claimed the restaurant had shut down because of Keith's medical reasons. Yet, we would later learn in 2018 that it actually shut down due to their inability to pay vendors, or rent, as they racked up further debt. And we already learned from Keith and Lisa that they were in pretty massive debt to begin with. At the time though, customers were not happy as they had purchased gift certificates for the restaurant right before it closed, which prompted the Attorney General's office to investigate Tavolini in February 2011. It was subsequently replaced by Briac Restaurant and Raw Bar, a seafood resto bar with an average Yelp rating of 4.0, with 159 reviews at the time of this video. It's not known when exactly it replaced Tavolini, but with its first Yelp review coming in 2012, we can assume it didn't take too long. As for Tavolini, on the other hand, there were practically no Yelp reviews except for one in December 2010, which was a rather positive review about the food and service. Something tells me it may not have been a genuine review, though. With all this said, and how the episode turned out, it really is no surprise a restaurant closed its doors. While reflecting on the episode, Redditors point to just how negligent and unlikable the owners were. Others mention how they wish the restaurant would fail after seeing how Lisa let her husband walk all over her kids, along with her audacity to order food for herself during a hectic dinner service. Others commented on Keith's abusive behavior and how it was never called out. Van was praised for standing up to him. Many also hoped Van moved on to better things following Tavolini. That seems to be the case, as Van began a career as a car sales specialist not long after working at Tavolini. As per his LinkedIn, he worked for a variety of car dealerships in and around the Greenwich, Connecticut area. In May 2016, he joined Danbury Porsche as a global brand ambassador and got promoted to business manager within a year. As of January 2023, he was promoted to general sales manager and has continued in that role since. Lisa opened a consignment shop called Bella Collections in October 2010, but it closed its doors less than a year later in July 2011. It looks like rent played a role there as well with the shop's co-owner, Bonnie Gabris, revealing, We tried. I put a lot of money into it, but some months it doesn't even cover the rent. At the time, according to the article, numerous customers expressed frustration about being owed money by Lisa and her business associate. Attempts to reach Lisa by phone were unsuccessful, as calls went unanswered. Finally, Keith has been the most active out of everyone, particularly on his Facebook page where he posts photos and life updates. In March 2018, he notably revealed he was in a relationship once again. He ended up getting remarried, with the pictures being posted in November 2021. Hopefully this marriage lasts and there are no more, or at the very least, fewer debt problems. It appears after Tavolini, Keith returned to his roots in the liquor business, a position he holds today. Not much is known about everyone else, but all we can hope for is that they're doing well.